Hey creatives, I'm Rita Bearcat and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time watching, this is day number 26 of 30 days of art challenges that I'm doing in my art journal. Now, I sent these out to my subscribers and I will add a link below if you would like to subscribe to receive these challenges in your inbox. And today I'm actually starting off with some watercolor paper. Um, and if you've watched a couple of the videos before, I have done some watercolor pages before and added them into my journal. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just playing with some watercolor um, on some watercolor paper. And a lot of times you can do stuff on paper and then turn around and add it to your journals just because sometimes it's easier especially if your journal's gotten quite bulky and mine do get really bulky because i do add a lot of mixed media so sometimes the pages aren't flat because of all the texture that i use in my mixed media and so sometimes it's easier just to do it on um, paper first and add it to something that's already happening in your journal and so right now i'm playing with water um, I just do some, you know, squiggly lines and kind of play with the watercolor and just see really what uh, shapes appear. Um, not having a real plan ahead of time, just playing with the paint. And sometimes I'll flick it with water to add a little bit more movement um, and add just color wherever, I don't know, I just feel like it needs some more color. Now, a lot of times I will turn the page several times around, which it also makes it nice when it's a small size. Because sometimes when you look at it from a different point of view, you might see something differently um, or something may come alive. Now, as I was doing this at first, I was thinking that it looked like maybe water, um, like water lilies kind of, um, some type of a flower but then the more I started doing it I'm like wait they kind of look like jellyfish and, and so I kind of went with that so it's it's an abstract but there's still some design to it which sometimes just in the process you'll see something come to light so it really could have gone either way but I went with a little bit of both <laughs> Sows and jellyfish and a couple of flowers. Now, right now I'm using a gold PBO pen. And when you, I put it on there and before it dries, sometimes I add a little bit of water to it. So it just kind of blends with the rest of my um, watercolor paintings. And what that does is it makes it not look so much like a marker, but just like gold painting and little shimmers into the project. The trick is just to do it before it dries.
I'm just adding some details with a black pen. I don't remember the name of this pen, but it's kind of like a uniball where it has a free flowing ink. And I like to use it because it's really dark black. Um, and uh, it, it kind of works over a lot of surfaces because the ink is flowing so much. I'll put a link below of the name of the pen because I don't remember right now as I'm taking the video. Now, I will say the pen is not waterproof, so it has to be on a dry surface. And uh, you have to know that you're not going to wet it again if you use this particular pen. But I seem to be really liking it a lot lately, um, just because of the size of the tip. I'm also going back in now with a white Pibio pen and these Pibio pens have acrylic paint inside so it's a paint pen and I'm just adding little details to kind of make the project come to life. So once my project felt done, I did dry it and I decided that I was going to put it in this journal page um, just because the colors match so nicely. So I needed to cut it down because this is a 5x7 art journal page and the paper was um, quite a bit larger than uh, the journal. So I had to trim that down and sometimes you know you want to take a look at it and see um, is the balance there, you know, when you're cropping it, um, you know, does it need a little bit more? And after I cropped it, I decided that it did need a little bit more color on the one edge because I, it felt like not balanced because it had too much, a little too much white there. So I added a little bit more. And I also did the edges with paint just so that it would pop once I adhere it to the rest of the journal. Once I have it painted and cropped and it's dry, now I can use some gel medium to attach it to my page. And as you can see, I already had a girl there stamped um, and I, I did feel like, okay, she needs a little bit more detail, a little bit more polishing, um, especially now that the page has come together and we've got this beautiful abstract on the, the left hand side. So I need the girl to pop just as much as the art is popping so um, needing that to balance it out so again I'm going in here with my my pen and just adding some details and then touching up anything that I see you know just needs touching up Bye. Bye. 
this uh, girl, this curly haired girl is um, one of the stamps um, with my designs. So this is a girl that I originally drew and then um, Art Foamies made it into a stamp and this is in the shop as well. And this just goes to show is that you can turn a stamp into a work of art and it doesn't have to look like a stamp. So I very rarely use a stamp or a stencil and just leave it. I always try to add my own touches to it so that it, you kind of incorporate it into your artwork. Once I felt like she was good, um, I did end up adding a little bit more detail to it, and you'll see that in the pictures. Um, I was pretty happy with these pages, so I hope that you like this. I think I think it's really fun and something easy that you could try. Um, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.